<clears throat> okay. Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Dato Forest, and welcome back to my live stream. We will continue to uh, explore the world of Final Fantasy XIV and we'll try to go to the edge of the universe where Meteon create her nest there for like million of years perhaps or just millennia <laughs> who knows how long has she been doing it but uh, yes we will try to explore that area of the world or the universe in Final Fantasy fourteen, and probably we'll try to resolve the problem where people turn into monster. Well, we will see what happened. Talking about unusual phenomenon, I'm starting to get uh, my, I mean, lose my accent. <laughs> my accent lately, for some weird reason, is sound like Chinese. <laughs> and I'm positively, I'm not Chinese. <laughs> That's what happened when you stay away from the country that who's I mean the country that's where I speak English and your primary language for too there long. You are. And that's what happened. Some time indeed. indeed. Yes. yes. For you, for you at least. Wait, that sound like either MSL or Believe me, I'd meant to get some yet proper sleep, but here we are, drifting along instead. Well, I thought well, they, I thought you they yes. and so we remain to watch and wonder. So he'd be watching me, watching over me. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. To begin, 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 we first must see the end. So that means he's still alive? No, well, not exactly alive. More likely his conscience is still there.
That's what fast. They ate, I mean, they ate of creation. Out of my thought, huh, interesting. Uh, Tholi, Tholi? <laughs> I'm a hopper. <laughs> so that means he lets us use the sip. Well, we already know. <laughs>
Ha. There's no turning back. We have come to this far. Hi, Bob. <laughs> So, the coins are the end of creation, not the end of the universe, okay. Maybe I will have to, well, edit it out later on, on my descriptions. <laughs> Uh, 
And what? <laughs> Sometimes I just like you. Ah, why? The time is in crisis and the game story love to have a lot of filler. <laughs> Well, I guess it's anime time logic. <laughs> well, I think that happens supposed to be like in a blink of eye, but it's loud for I don't know how many episodes. <laughs> see. There will be another custom. Let's see what kind of custom that she pull out this time. Really? Worry your faith in me may be misplayed? Huh. No. <laughs> I would like you to go visit this right hand when it's over. Probably that is where I will purchase the endgame item or weapon or whatever it is. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh. I merely, I merely, I think I forgot his name. I merely, I merely, <laughs> You won't find anything good with Sally and Christine. <laughs> they eat bland bread for that matter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can look. Let's just cash in. Have better meal than just eating the plain bread. <laughs> Hancock. Be lemon cake. <laughs> Tataru does seem like well, she doesn't seem more likely very happy with it. <laughs> well, Lala fell on we have some scheme. Evil scream. <laughs> A beacon way. Even narrow. That's interesting. Well, but narrow and uh, see it. They both really 
brilliant engineer from Gallimore but if they even surprise about it, that means the arc is very advanced Yeah, haven't we met before? <laughs> Interesting, interesting. Rank school DPS. Wait, did I? Oh, this is. <laughs> it's a medical rank DPS. Wait a second, so what is the physical rank DPS? Just physical DPS? What I just don't say, magical DBS. <laughs> Why they have to add the word rank? Every magic have rank. Well, unless there will be a future 
melee magic, which is kind of weird. <laughs> ah well. Let's try hard. So does it mean I don't have to finish the grow quest? Convenient. I still need more of the um uh what they call it again? <laughs> Accessory, yes. Said it looked very familiar, like I like see somewhere before. Huh. I can't remember where did I see this kind of clothes. It's close. Yeah. I cannot remember, but it's very, very familiar. Does have a uh, something like an instrument behind? There's a lock box. Hmm. 
<laughs> now do I do look like I have that one. <laughs> but it's an entire different set of item. Having dinner. The last supper, I guess. <laughs> Your business with Tataru is finished. Yes. My, what a thoughtful surprise. Whatever would we do without her? Indeed. And she's right, you know. It hasn't been all doom and gloom. Feels like a lifetime ago that Master Louis Soir gathered us together to form the Circle of Knowing. Oh, they have pizza right Since there. Then, we have experienced much. But rather than feeling wiser, the more I learn, the more I find my knowledge lacking. Forsooth, as a student, vainly did I believe that I held the secrets of creation in my grasp. Yet that which I had seized was but an insignificant sliver of what awaited in the wider world. Every encounter, 
Every experience hath served to open mine eyes, enlightening and humbling me in equal measure. Even from those whom I called enemies have I learned many a valuable lesson. What will we learn at the edge of the universe, I wonder? Yes, it's still called at the edge of the universe. Ultima Thule. Oh, that is Hamburger. Where the bringer of the end makes her nest. And <laughs> Sarah can't possibly imagine. Whatever awaits us there, we will survive. We must. For her. Just making sure you bring enough ammunition. <laughs> uh, I would say, like, there's nothing left to prove. Not you mean Filiano. Green. He have everything to offer. <laughs> Is what the matter? A hey, surprise! <laughs> No, it's nothing. I just... Well, lately I find myself surprised at how much I've changed. How much we've all changed. <laughs> we've come far together. And if we have aught to say about it, we'll go further still. Hey, I they have burrito! this calamity and return home. preparation for which, we must give thought to what we hope to achieve after the proverbial dust has settled. What with the primals and Asians all but dealt with, I suppose we'll need to look for new hobbies. In all seriousness, though, in uniting to overcome a common foe, the disparate peoples of the world have found a way forward together. It's a truly gratifying sight to see. Indeed. Though it was many years in the making, we have successfully set in motion the gears of fundamental change. With this, we have fulfilled our humble role as a symbol of hope. And I dare say it is time to bow out. After all, there is no shortage of hands to bear the torch in our stead. Funny. You know, I never really considered I might live long enough to see an after. Very funny. The way she delivers, it feel like this is what the developer would try to say. <laughs> but even if my time as a scion came to an end, I don't expect that much will change. Traveling the world, going wherever the wind blows, lending a hand to those in need. A journey for journey's sake, it doth suit thee well. I must confess I too have yearned to see more of the world. If thou art amenable to the suggestion, I would accompany thee. Mine ability to affect an air of normalcy through artful disguise is much improved, thou must concede. Aye, well, improvement is relative. You still look suspicious no matter what you wear. <coughs> what of you, Ishtola? Any grand plans? Why, continue my quest for knowledge, naturally. To begin with, I wish to know the state of the reflections. To which end I must find a means to travel between worlds. Tis the least I must do if I am to keep my promise.
Should my pursuits prove unduly arduous, I won't hesitate to call on you. And in return, I will take you to see Reen one day. I'm sure you cannot wait to see the fine young woman she has become. <laughs> Spare me. And what of thee? What wouldst thou pursue at duty's end? Here's yours. My apologies for the wait. Well, shall we make a toast? To victory. To our comrades. To the future of the star. Palestinian without the gear does look different. <laughs> oh, what brings you here? Ah, so you were worried that the Levia household might again be gripped by turmoil. <laughs> <laughs> All is well, I assure you. In my letters home, I had made mention of Estinian, you see. My mother wished to meet the legend in person, and so we arranged to have a spot of tea together. Where were you in my hour of need? Fell beasts I can face, but I'm not made for idle chit-chat with lords and ladies. <laughs> well, I for one thought you held your own. Mother was the picture of delight. <laughs> I might have been delighted myself, were we in a tavern with more agreeable drink. The thought of fleeing crossed my mind. But what then? I'd never hear the end of it. Least of all from Tataru. I'm sorry. It was not my intent to cause you such distress. It's just... It was one of the things I didn't want to leave undone ere we set forth. That's not to say I think we won't be returning. Yet, given what lies ahead... I did not wish to leave for later that which I could do today. After all, tomorrow is never promised. It's fine. Not like I had better things to do. Besides, seeing you with your mother brought back fond memories of my own. Be we rich or poor, family is family well it's past time we were on our way wait
since I left home, I've made a great many mistakes. Mistakes for which I can never make amends. But through it all, you didn't give up on me. To have returned here with you at my side, it means more to me than you know. <clears throat> Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. <sighs> Forgive me, but it needed to be said. I'm the one who owes you thanks. Really? <laughs> Were it not for you, I would not be alive today. Nor come to terms with Nidhogg's spirit. Oh, yeah, right. I am ever grateful. you down. Together, we'll show the enemy the strength of mortal will. There would be a lot of mosquito sucking blood mosquito if sleeping outside like that. <laughs> dreaming about the celestial adventures to come. Just as well. They've been running themselves ragged of late. Unlike you and the others, I'm a few steps removed from the danger and excitement. The things you all get up to never fail to impress me. But by the same token, I can't help but worry. Not only for your safety, but but for your happiness. After everything you've sacrificed, you earned it a thousand times over. From the simple pleasures of tucking into a hearty meal or, or collapsing into a comfortable bed, to the grand triumphs of visiting legendary lands or finding true love. You deserve all the joy in the world. There is so much that life has to offer. So much to be treasured and shared with those we hold dear. So promise me this. 
come what may, you won't give up on your own happiness. When you're out there fighting tooth and nail, it's all too easy to forget. But in the end, your passions will be your greatest strength of all. Remember that. feels familiar. Well, it is good to be... Uh, wait. What are you... What am I... Gods, don't tell me I fell asleep. Not that there's any shame in it, but you were sleeping like babies. Oh... How embarrassing. Not a word to anyone. Understood? Not one word. I'm told that sleeping in proper beds of your own choosing is a much more effective way to prepare for battle. the two of you doing here? I had a few books to return to the library. Thought I'd take care of it while I could. And you? Just enjoy a little peace and quiet. It's a secret. <laughs> Maybe. Nothing in particular.
Gino? Yes. What he's doing? And he have oh yeah, he absorbed the power of uh, Yodiak. So now he's hybrid Yodiak human. Get what you want. Not even the battle you pine for so dearly. In that transcendent moment, what was it that I sought in you? And what was it that you sought in me? It's what a dynamis controlling him that make him feel like transcended. Probably. <laughs> the day of reckoning. Oh. Often have we thus assembled to combine our knowledge and seek solutions to the problems before us. Back at the Waking Sands, it was all we could do to address the most minor of troubles. Who could have realized what we'd find when we began to look to the sources of the realm's woes? At the Rising Stones, we made great strides and shared many moments. From the joyous to the sorrowful. We've had occasion to call other places home too. Be it Ishgard or Kugane, we were fortunate to find sanctuary wherein we might take stock and continue our fight. I was honored to host this company in the Crystarium, to stand with you all as we confronted the truth of the star itself. And now from this place, we go to fight the most important battle of all. Forum has sent word. The Ark is ready. Good. The Lopriots naturally will be commanding the vessel. They will see the eight of you to Ultima Thor. Arriving, your objective is to find and vanquish Meteon. As a final formality, the Forum bade me ascertain your resolve. So, are you certain you wish to do this? Yes, I do. I mean, we do. We all do. We are. Then, ere you report to Thalmasane, I leave you with these words.
You must triumph. What that means will differ for each of you. To make it back home, or to simply avert doom, or perhaps something else altogether. Yet whatever it is that drives you, I have faith in its power to see you through. So please, triumph. Triumph, as we who remain behind believe you will. Let us be off then. to see you off, but as your receptionist, I feel I need to say this here. Safe journey, all of you, and oh, be safe. Time to get on the ship. Ah, uh, the Ark. Oh, wait a second. So, this is how the Ark ready. They have some kind of clips underneath it. Oh my! This looks like the one thing, I mean, the, 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 the thing that's moving around in Final Fantasy VIII for every single ship in there. Interesting. Balan Garden or something like that. <laughs> oh, Random Rock.
All present and accounted for. Good. As you will have heard, the Ark is ready. All that remains is to board and be on your way. Oh, I've seen my fair share of tight schedules, but this was bloody murder. <laughs> well, the time is ticking. But anyway. we did it. We finished the ship. Can you play it? It's safe, fit for purpose, and looks good to boot. Aye, it's a garland through and through. I really don't know what we'd do without you. Thank you for everything. Ah, don't mention it. Ever since that episode with Omega, I've been toying with the idea of star-faring vessels. Oh, interesting. And as they say, Necessity is the mother of invention. We've learned a lot, let me tell you. In case you're wondering about payment, the ongoing existence of the world ought to do. But feel free to throw in a colorful recounting of your journey on your return. So, have you thought of a name? A name? Wasn't everyone just calling it Father's teeny tiny toy boat? <laughs> teeny tiny toy boat. Well, seeing as its purpose has changed, I thought a more eloquent name was in order. I suggested as much to Fortuno, who seemed quite amenable to the idea. As you know, this vessel is the culmination of heretofore unprecedented collaboration. And though said collaboration is owed to the Scions, there is another whose noble deeds made our work possible. From a fragment of Dalamud, we obtained not only advanced materials such as refined adamantite, but the knowledge to traverse the stars. And this fragment would not have found its way to us had the Archon Luiswa not fought to protect this world. And in so doing, laid down his life. Now that the vessel stands complete, I cannot help but wonder if it was more than mere happenstance. If it was my father's intention to guide us here. In the hopes that his guidance will see you all safely home, I name the vessel after that self-same fragment of Dalamud he delivered unto us. The Starship Ragnarok. Oh my! <laughs> Ragnarok! Interesting. <laughs> I just say Ragnarok earlier, and it's come. He's Ragnarok. Oh wait a second. There's also a starship named Ragnarok that's crashed on the moon. Okay, maybe. But this ship have a lot of similarity to the Ragnarok from Final Fantasy VIII or the Starship. Blah. The space from Final Fantasy VIII does no way run around. Oh, okay. Stop babbling. <laughs> Sorry for the wait. I got everyone you asked for, and not a one less. On the beast tribe. What are you all doing here? Oh, I invited them. The representatives of those tribes with religious inclinations. Well, you've done a fine job of readying the Ragnarok, but for it to take flight, we'll of course need the power of the Mother Crystal. Given its immense size, however, transporting it would be an absolute logistical nightmare, not to mention we'd need to shatter it into tiny shards for feeding to the engines. But a 
a brilliant idea came to me. We convert the crystal's energy into forms that can transport themselves. Interesting. <sighs> Thou wouldst employ summoning. Or should I say its precursor, creation magics. Care to explain for our benefit? As you may have witnessed at Bestways Burrow, the Loperids are capable of creation magics, which they use to shape the moon's environment. Yet simple though they make it seem, tis a highly advanced and exacting art. To perform it correctly, require it that the wielder holdeth the object in his mind's eye in clearest detail. Hence the ancient's meticulous management of concepts. Drawing upon this art, the Asians conceived of summoning as we know it. A derivative that replaceth the complexity of concepts with the simplicity of zealotry to make manifest a creation. I see. By combining the Loperit's magics and the tribe's faith, we convert the Mother Crystal into primals of purer form and greater obedience. Summoning as it was intended, one might say. Indeed! Indeed! While Hydaelyn gave us the ability to use creation magics, she forbade us from using it to make anything possessed of a soul, or similar. She didn't say anything about fulfilling the desires of others, though. So, borrowing our friend's faith, we'll create deities using the Mother Crystal's power and send them to the Ragnarok! Am I the only one here concerned about the risk of being turned into a tempered minion? Oh, right, I was getting to that. From what I've read in Charlian tomes, it appears the Asians incorporated an additional nasty element into their summoning method. The fervent desire to assimilate others into one's belief. Beings thus created are instilled with the self-same desire and use their powers to enthrall people, starting with the summoner. In contrast, our creation magics, the original and the best, except no substitutes, don't incorporate any of that rubbish. So, there's no risk of tempering. I mean, if the being was on the scale of Zodiac, you might feel a little tug. But I think we'll be safe enough. <coughs> Truth be told, I do not understand the intricacies of this plan. But none of us would ever turn our backs on you. When the avatars of our faith ran amok, you intervened without decrying we who birthed them. Where others vilified and suppressed us, you offered understanding and friendship. In gratitude, we will share with you the true expressions of our gods, not malevolent deities, but benevolent saviors. All right, you lot, we're heading to the ethereal sea. Stay in sight, else you're liable to get lost. Leave the way. May we have a moment? In anticipation of the day man might journey to the stars, we developed these. Portable teleportation devices. One for each of you, designed to work in tandem. Press the button on one, and in a matter of moments, all eight will activate and send their owners back to the Ragnarok. There is no telling what hazards you may encounter. If you find yourself separated or lost, please do not hesitate to use them. Be safe, all of you, and come back. You as well. 
I pray you take care. Looks like everything is in order. So I'll go ahead and board. A few of my fellows will remain to assist with the summonings, but rest assured, the vessel won't want for competent crewing. If you are ready, then you should board as well. Go, and Godspeed. Should I go take a break first? Eh. I don't feel the need of taking a break yet. Just keep going. Inside ship looked like elegant mag. Welcome to the bridge, everyone. I hope you have everything because I can't be bothered turning back. <laughs> Even see not bothering to turning back. I can still teleport back. <laughs> it's incredible. This is Fortuno. Can you hear me? The preparations for the summonings are complete. In accordance with the 14th phase of the plan, we have moved the Ragnarok to the launch site. The gates are open. You may depart when ready. So, are we ready? As ready as we'll ever be. Let's get going. Oh, come on. The burnt out star's got more fire in its belly. <laughs> he should have come in too large. <laughs> He had been sleeping Engage. the whole time. <laughs> Oh 
my, the way it's launched exactly like Final Fantasy A Ragnarok. <laughs> Why is move so slow? So, where is the primal? Uh, the summon. Oh, there is it. Someone that come together. Ah, that I must carry land walkers into the sky. I cannot imagine a greater indignity. <laughs> <laughs> Do not sulk so. For thy mighty winds exist not only to buffet and batter. Nay, they may serve also to thrust forth with vigor. Such is thy glory, and thus it is an occasion to rejoice. So come, let us revel! <laughs> Now they start to, well, speak, speak up the uh, process. Oh, wait a second, they open the wrap. I mean, the wormhole right in the atmosphere of the planet. Uh, I mean, the star. <laughs> That's a little bit dangerous. So, in conclusion, we'll only know what's there when we get there. The crew and I will see to it the ship's 
ready to take off at a moment's notice. We'll support the search as best we can, but it'll be your paws on the ground, assuming there is any. But everything will be fine, I'm sure. Heidelin believes in you, so you ought to believe in yourselves. Just don't do anything I wouldn't. Like waiting too long to use those portable teleporters of yours. Personally, at the slightest sign of trouble, I'd mash the button to bits. And you should as well. Understood. We promise to be careful. I suggest you brace yourselves. We're about to arrive and the vessel will shake a good bit. Wow, that is fast. Dark meat yarn. Greetings. Can you hear me? So this is Meteon. I don't remember meeting you myself, but I do know that you're from Atheris. Why have you come? All you had to do was wait. I would have delivered to you your ends. We didn't ask for that. I don't understand. All life is destined to end. Why choose to prolong your suffering? Effort, ambition, love. They amount to naught. Happiness, should you find it, is inevitably lost. Stolen away by events beyond your control. There is no logic nor meaning in it. You think there is. Convince yourselves. But it's all a cruel accident. Come now. I speak the truth. A truth you would recognize if you looked up at the night sky. Unbroken emptiness. Cold, dark, and silent. Your world, like every other, is but a blemish upon its perfect fabric. Life is an anomaly. It is unnatural and cannot continue. The sooner you accept this, the easier it will be. Wait, if she say that way, isn't she also a life form that should be, well, ended? <laughs> Just to be clear, we're not here to argue with you. We know that life is fleeting, and that in the short time we have it, we're not assured happiness. Indeed. I've seen far more sorrow in the eyes of many I've met. I myself have plenty of regrets. And one day they'll die with me. 
gone to dust with my good deeds and unfulfilled dreams. But we accept this. That our existence may seem pointless. That sorrow, rage and despair will always dog our heels. And we press on regardless. That is why Heidlin guided us here. In her boundless love for mankind, she has prepared us for this trial, and in her name, we have come for you. Yes, I sense it. A burning passion like unto fury. I know it well. For the same passion once burned in many a star before yours. Suffocated and extinguished now. Sandry, I mean Sand Greek. By the fury. Thancred. Meteon is gone as well. Mayhap he awakened first and gave chase. Uh everyone! It appears we are at our destination. This this is Ultima Thule. Not that we know what to expect, but I wasn't expecting this. From atmospheric composition to ambient temperatures, all reading to within permissible range. This place is capable of supporting life. Meteon just took Thanris to somewhere, so we don't. I mean, I kidnap him. You to perform a full inspection of the ship as well as a biological scan. So it was that the brave wayfarers arrived at last at Dream's End. In following their path walked, and history written, I am made keenly aware of one truth. Though the curtains may fall again and again, so long as others take the stage, ever shall there be more tales to tell. So, let them bring it to a close, I say. Let the curtains fall upon this. The final chapter in the tale of the star. Oh wow, this place looks very interesting. I, is this a dead star? Look like it. As I live and breathe, I live and breathe. Well, the environment itself shouldn't kill us. 
Well then, let us search for Thancred while exploring the area. The ship we leave in your care. Interesting. That's a key item? No. Let's go back to uh, Labyrinth, Labyrinthine, Labyrintho, Labyrintho. <laughs> Dragonfly. Interesting. Wait a second. If that's a Death Star and these are pretty much like dragon that got petrified, it is the home of. This song, I mean, how'd you say his name again? Miss Gum, Miss Gum, or something like that. Oh, very much the home, the home planet of the dragon. Mika Summer, yeah. So this could be the home planet, of, I mean, home star of Mr. Gummer. Mika Summer. Ah. Why do you keep saying Mr. Gummer? <laughs> oh dear. 
sorry, dyslexia. Yes, I have dyslexia, so a lot of time I tend to say something. Make work. Beside, uh, in the rain. Wait a second. This is like when we a battle with Omega. Dynamis Crystal. Interesting. Anyway, um, in the uh, Omega Ray, yeah, it just say about uh, Mika Summer kind of flee from his old star because uh, the star were dying, and also the the cutscene of that is look almost look like this one. Except it's on a planet. I mean, on on a star. Oh wow, that's interesting. Too bad Mr. Gum, I mean Midgar Summer, kind of slipping. So, we cannot ask him. Wait, if I summon him out, will he? React? <laughs> Anything? Nope. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, this parent look like Omega. That is why it's so familiar to you. So that is the sea of star down there.
Wait, these dragon they don't see it? So they only be able to see something that have ether corporal, not something that being made out of um, dynamis. Our character, on the other hand, able to see something that make out of dynamis. So, Estinian see them too, and he, ex I mean, suspecting this play could be the home play of the dragon. Probably not here. Dragons, 
here. What you see is a memory of a world that once was. Ah, the memory of the one, the world of once were. So this is the home of Midgard Summer. A world suffering a slow death, whose denizens cried out for the release of oblivion. What? Their world is dead? It is. Not a single life remains upon that husk floating in the vast emptiness. These creatures are shadow and shade, perpetuated only to suffuse dynamis with their unending lamentations. Our friend Sancred, where is he? A strange question. He is at your side, is he not? Oh yes. He is here and there, and everywhere within this space. He would tell you himself if he had form to form words. He is huh. Such loathing and uncertainty. You don't know why you still exist. In like manner to the oblivion I send. I try to drown out your ether with dynamis. Beginning with this Thancred, who came at me despite being unable to breathe. Such a simple thing, unmaking men. In the blinking of an eye, he was gone didn't even have the chance to be transformed. Yet somehow, he managed to leave a slither of himself behind. What you call... the heart? Or perhaps the soul? In his final moment, he... cried out from it. A single word. Survive. <gasps> that wish proved stronger than the despair that ruled here. It overpowered it, causing this space to be remade. Oh. Into a place you can perceive, and where life can endure. That you draw breath is proof that his soul lives on. For how long, however, remains to be seen. Well then, we should hurry and tend to business. Huh? It's futile. You will never reach the true me. I told you. Emotions dictate reality in this space. Such changes as you might work will not alter in its nature. You may see, but you cannot touch. Walk, but not advance. Then just your emotion. Meteon holds too much sway here. How do we contend with a foe who can unmake us on a whim? I do not know. But Tancred gave his life that we might come this far. We must press on. Agreed. We cannot turn tail here. Not without something to show for our comrade's sacrifice. Interesting. 
I just realized that the name of the course have a very different letter. I mean letter. A strange new world. With this letter and this letter. This is the beginning and then alpha. This look like sigma and no, this is not omega. There is no omega. I mean, there is no w in. Uh, This is directly. Yeah, this is pretty much directly referring to Omega Ray. Oh, maybe that's the reason why. I heard about a making Omega. I mean, remaking of the uh, Omega Ray. Yeah, I forgot to attune to uh, this crystal. I mean, ether, right?
That's being considered a dragon? Interesting. Dragon Neck. So this is pretty much the face of those Dragon Neck. They become malformed. Even if they successfully Hatch.
Hmm. Well, hard to convince them since they already run out of hope. Oh, I'm level 90. Test up wheel. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read.
Ah, interesting. Your emotion dictate this era. Just using the emotion. Okay, so uh, it's been more than two hours, so uh, I really need to take a break and go to the bathroom. So um, I will be back in about 30 minutes. Well, see you soon. Okay, now I'm back. Let's continue with the story and the process of the game. He remaineth as he was when I first approached, entombed in melancholy. I see. Perhaps I could... I'll handle this. So, waiting to die like all the others, are you?
So you say. Yet your kind has found a new beginning on our star. One of you braved the expanse, bearing with him a clutch of eggs. They and their children now rule our skies, their song heard by all. suffering in kind. Your brethren made the selfsame choice. My family might still be alive. Yet lasting peace does not come to those who simply retreat from conflict. No. You must be willing to confront it. To stare into the face of your foe and see yourself in him. Only then can you break the cycle of torment and tragedy? This lesson, a dear friend taught me at the risk of his life. There is no nobility in your penance. You wallow in self-pity. And after everything we've endured, we will not let you stop us. Justinian too! There's a wind! He's opened the way for us. Sacrificed himself to remake this place, like Thancred did. <laughs> oh, Alpha, no. <sighs> oh yeah, Come. Alpha, no have a lot of. Let us follow the wind. It will not lead us astray. He would not. He have a lot of emotion that attack to. Uh... Estinian.
So, I guess there will be a lot of people will be sacrificed in this play to open the way to Medion and receive the entire Death Star. It seems like this place looked a little bit clearer than it's used to be. Let foggy. Or maybe was this night time? No, this is night time. Okay. So maybe it's that it's truly less foggy. So that means he create the ether current. Okay, so who will be the sacrificial lamb next? <laughs> So it just dust, nothing else, nothing to say. Really? Ah, the eye. Look like a mamoro from distance. Ah, interesting map.
I have no idea what is written. <laughs> Dry AI mud. say no west northwest oh interesting oh here's like this outer cell of a, a planet or broken planet this also look like the outer cells as well or the, the Curse that rocking out. Huh. Very interesting. There's a lot of dying star around here. They look very near. Could be another race in this dying star. Okay, I have no idea. <laughs>
Oh, they are Easter Bay Life Form. Let's see, 198,712,180,812 Really? I can hear the ether current up there. Yep, they see.
Oh, Daisy. By the way, I don't think there's only one single star or planet that reside here, but many, many collapse on each other. Like here, probably the Ia. The first area pretty much where the dragon or the star boat or could be any star in this graveyard of the star. So how long they have they stand idling? Probably very very long. <laughs>
Lalak, Dukik, Ninik. <laughs> That's weird. Name. Well, to our town. <laughs> And what kind of food do they serve here? I don't think this will be very pleasant food. <laughs> <laughs> we could eat.
Oh, so this is the the race, you no know, a pursuing happiness and from um, million report. The limit of knowledge. <laughs> Deciphering the law of creation. So this is the daytime. Is I mean the sky looked the same. Nothing changed. North is ah too far. Probably here.
Okay, so look like you and you're going to be the next sacrificial lamb. <laughs>
interesting. <clears throat> So not here, somewhere up there. Crystal have engraved with something that I don't know how to read it. <laughs> So this is probably the last civilization of a distant star. Under on the star is look so small. To the south. Continue. Tell us about this truth you discovered. Very well. Bear in mind, however, that the purpose of this conversation is not to impart scholarly knowledge, for such requires that you comprehend the subject matter which you will not. We will forego the intricacies of our scientific methodology and deal only with the conclusion the end of our society and our world. We acknowledge with regret that your star is in the midst of the same panic-induced cataclysm that befell Deneb 3. As such, in order to avoid causing undue distress, we will refrain from explicitly stating how much time you have remaining. You are entirely too kind. I pray you recount your tale as you see fit. In the beginning, the universe was but a tiny particle. Then suddenly, this particle began to expand. Having remained entirely in the bounds of your star, the phenomenon may be difficult for your kind to grasp. But 
this expansion has since continued unabated. Speculating that the universe could not grow indefinitely, we sought to learn what might occur and made a worrying discovery. The stars will continue to spread apart, as will their finite thermal energies. Eventually, all heavenly bodies will grow cold and freeze. No new stars will be born, and the universe will enter into an eternal ice age. Entropy. In hopes of proving that this determination was erroneous, we scrutinized our research from all angles, even as we sought to avert the everlasting winter. The endeavor proved fruitless. So infamously so, in fact, that it became synonymous with vain effort. The universe as we know it would end, and there is no way to prevent it. Beneath the weight of this knowledge, our society stagnated. Though we had time still, it was a cold comfort. Why strive for anything when desolation is assured? When our wealth of wisdom accumulated since the dawning of our kind would be forever lost. No civilization would rise from our ashes. No scholar recover our knowledge. In silence unbroken, naught would stir. Intellect was once our pride. Overnight, it became our shame. Our works, monuments to futility. Immortality, our greatest invention, became a source of suffering. Rather than suffer on, many chose to unmake themselves by means of etheric exsanguinators. Etched upon these stones are the testaments of such souls. Though many left no words at all, thinking it a pointless gesture. Once we have obtained vessels of flesh, we likewise intend to vanish. If you understand this, understand aught of our tale, you will abandon your quest for knowledge. Ignorance truly is bliss. If you would cling to your illusory happiness, remain primitive and pure. It is the only way. <sighs> so that's your story. While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed, truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? That our science failed us? Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. But of one thing am I absolutely certain. I would not be happier in ignorance. You stole a gnome! You mustn't! The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. 
Also, Istola will be a sacrificial lamb in this park, not Uriangel. He's just the one who knows Istola going to do it. Just asking us not to interfere. Nay, hey, tis when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. This is what has sustained me, driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. The universe may end, and all may be for naught, but I will live as I always have. I will always seek out new knowledge, and no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it all. But worry not. We consider it our duty to enlighten you, and we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. the old way come I mean become a bird keep calm and listen well though my body will soon dissipate there may be a way to restore it Asim's magic so long as our souls remain you can use it to summon us back oh but you mustn't for it would mean losing our way forward this I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic we came here knowing what victory may cost, so press on. Press on, and do not look back. I shall join thee. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. Oh. My resolve hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions and afterwards been stricken with regret. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, I may also claim to excel in prophecies. My studies, into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality. Thus shall I hope that thou mayest have the strength to resist and our comrades the strength to continue. With you to urge us on, how could we possibly fail? What's this? An extinguished civilization? Rekindled? That's right! Our quest doesn't end here! We'll press on! And we will find you! There. That's 
where you'll find me. Is that another star? Of the stars we visited, most were already devoid of life. And where there was life still, the inhabitants wished for death. But even death, we learned, isn't truly the end. It is but a part of the cycle of rebirth. Souls return to the star, or in its absence, a larger flow. And eventually, they are reborn. Alive again, to know suffering anew. True salvation lies not in dying. It lies in not being born. This is the gift I would give to you. To all life on beautiful Atheris. To that end, we created an egg wherein life cannot quicken. That dead sun. Attain it if you can, before your friend's emotions fade away, along with their protection. So, it's worth sun. That being cold. Interesting. to the south. Oh, that is where the next place is. Omicron. Omicron? <laughs> that sounds like... You know who. <laughs> I mean, you know what. <laughs>
42. <laughs> Wait, 42. 42. Wait a second. <laughs> That's from a channel on YouTube. <laughs> Okay, I will be right back. I have a need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so, uh, be right back. Well, <laughs> so that my chocobo is not going to disappear. Okay, back. Sorry for the interruption, but I really cannot help with the... with that. I mean, the need. Is the necessity on human being <laughs> to go to the bathroom? Well, seeing the story of the area is still oh wow, that's look like. The Omega Lover Cheater <laughs> Lover Cheater <laughs> Interesting name So that's is pretty much being another islands. Hmm. 
portal of wisdom. Okay. Oh. The Omega. Okay, with this. So this is where the dragon and the machine fight. Eon ago, a uh, hundred thousand years ago, I don't know. Millennium ago, maybe. Striking dummy, huh? Interesting. Oh, Southeast.
So this is the uh, machine civilization. Interplanetary Traveler. Interesting. The planet. Apatron. <laughs> Apatron. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, so the concept of planet is still there. Stigma one. Ah. So not Omega. Okay, so this area probably where Rahatia have to be a sacrificial lion because he kind of recognized the structure.
But they are robot. How do they have emotion? With Kaya, we or they are sentinel robot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have no emotion at all.
Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So this guy start to acting like oh my god <laughs> Only two more. Wait, why did I see this earlier?
There's nothing in the east. Wait a second. I look at the wrong <laughs> direction. out of ideas as am i operating such consoles is trying enough but if we can't even activate it perhaps there is a way first consider the world that has been recreated here its inhabitants were machines who gathered combat data to enhance themselves and among the many wars they waged the most notable was that against the dragons. As you've doubtless surmised, I believe this was the home world of Omega. He got it. <laughs> he built a jamming device to defeat it, a device which generated massive bursts of lightning, its sole weakness. That's all well and good, but what does that... Wait, you're not thinking to strike the console with lightning, are you? Huh. As a matter of fact, I am. Ask yourselves this. Why would an entity as puissant as Omega not be designed to suppress the effects of lightning? Because it relies upon it, or something akin to it, as a source of energy. My thoughts exactly. And there is a good chance the same is true of the Omicrons and their devices. So... Shall I cast caution to the wind and try something reckless and dramatic? Wait, you still have it! Sid and Nero's legendary device which brought low the superweapon Omega! Wait, the actual device was much too big to lug around, so you must only have the control module. And there I was getting all excited. Never mind. An old-fashioned spell will suffice. Please make 
Wait, we have questions for you. Of late, no mission orders have been issued. Why not? Has there been some manner of trouble? Tell us why the Extended Operations Unit hasn't yet determined the guidelines. Unable to comply. Information unavailable or access restricted. In that case, is it possible for us to communicate directly with the unit? Access denied. Unable to establish connection. Is there anything you can tell us? Have there been any abnormalities, like a, a threat to the star or widespread unrest? Activated again, but I doubt it would be productive. What do you think? If all the Omicrons really were running as efficiently as it claimed, then I doubt they were hoping for life here to end. As this Sir told us, there just haven't been any new instructions, and everyone is standing by. Should be standing by at any rate. If there are those that are neglecting their duties, perhaps we can glean a clue from them. I propose we take another look around, and also try to find the operations unit. That's not supposed to be.
a malfunction Omicron. Okay. <laughs> Lambda. So we have Alpha, Beta, Omega, and here is Lambda. And Broken Omicron. Wait, M17? Is it that what we meant? And he creates something else. Here. It's like life. So he designed for something else. I see.
Oh, so the quest name is Arrow Not Found. I see. Hello, world. <laughs>
So does he, sir? <laughs> ask why you did this. From what we gather, it seems to be a personal matter. Interesting. functioning. no threat to justify your purpose. The Omicrons will never leave this star. They will stand by until the results of energy is spent. For I have no craft to offer them. None. Then... 
It is not our place to pass judgment on the deeds of the Omicrons. But surely, this does not have to spell the end of your people. With your power and knowledge, the possibilities are endless. Why not seek out a new purpose? That is impossible. In the beginning, we have a higher purpose than that of sort of power. And we must fight it when we so irrevocably altered our fundamental forms. When we cast aside our flesh, so too did we cast aside all that defined us. Nothing remains of who we once were. I have no aspirations. No longer can I dream. The vital spark is lost. Actually, he did regain that. Lost by its circuitry and held and commands. I believe I know how to overcome this despair. The words are ready in my mind, but ere I speak them... I want you to make me a promise. Be it across time or space, our promises have always connected us. And so I ask that you indulge me once more, that this won't be the end. So, in that case, I won't hold back. First, I want to visit Ishgard with you, properly. We scarcely had time to look around last time. I should like it very much if you could show me the sights. Next, you must regale me with your greatest adventures, in the places where you lived them, if possible. I may have read about all your deeds, but there is no substitute for a first-hand account. And last but not least, a new adventure together, unlike any we've experienced before. We'll travel the lands, cross the seas, and take to the skies upon the eternal wind, and it will be marvelous. Eternal wow. Wing! <laughs> and the song Eternal Wing is playing in the back. <laughs> if you would humor me a moment, when we awaken each morning, how can we prove that we're the same individual who retired the night before? And a saddle bringer song on so blade. Through the remembrance of past events, we might say. We have our memories. Yet there are times when we forget or recall incorrectly. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I think. What of our bodies then? It is the same one, we might say, yet, technically speaking, as living beings, our bodies are constantly changing. It will never be as it was at an earlier point in time. Our souls are no more immutable. On our star, people are known to inherit the souls of others, yet they are decidedly different beings. For my part, I've subjected my totality to much and more. I've made my body into an extension of a tower, blended my soul and memories with those of another self. And each time I would ask myself, what is it that makes me, me? Are you able to determine 
No. But that doesn't mean I'm confused. It simply means I'm the same as everyone else. So I posit this. Who we were need not describe what we now hold in our hearts. Whatever came before, what matters most is the present. For me, that is being here with my friends, full proud of how much we've grown together. So I urge you to not give up. Heed your heart's desire and hope that the future you long for shall be realized. I cannot. We cannot. We cannot understand desire, nor comprehend hope. We do not know how to create such things. We are not unlike you and I. I too have struggled to find the courage to express and embrace my wants. If you like, I will tell you a tale. A tale of a world on the brink. Of a people who never gave up on the future. Of a man who realized his grandest dreams and then awakened to a grander reality. to the end. Interesting. I saw that being played and sing in the background. Now.
well. Huh. I guess I would just stop for now. I mean, wrap up the uh, li the live stream since uh, first thing is been more than five hours of live stream, and well. I won't be able to make it for the final confrontations. And then, if I make it, this will be more than six hours of live stream, which maybe render me from able to uh, edit the uh, video on YouTube. So, yeah, that will be bad. I'm not exactly tired yet, but uh, yeah, it's maybe a better way. So that's next time that I leave stream. I also do have some content to run, otherwise just like the final boss, which is not well the final boss and the end credit scene, which is not a good, very good thing to watch. Okay then, let's decide it. I will just wrap up the live stream for now. So thank you for watching and hopefully we'll be back soon for my next live stream. Have a nice day.